this week's book is entitled Masters of Scale. So the author of this book is Reid Hoffman. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's the founder of LinkedIn and he's also part of the elite uh, PayPal Mafia group, right? Uh, in this book, he discusses the surprising truths of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, the strategies, the techniques they use to start a company and grow and scale it to a global brand, right? So as usual, I have my five key takeaways. And let's start with the first one, which is the first principles thinking. So the first principles thinking was... I think initially started by Aristotle, the Greek philosopher. And it's this thinking wherein it's it's the belief that everything is underpinned by our beliefs or assumptions. So through using this meso- method, it's about identifying a problem, breaking it down to basic assumptions, testing it, and creating it from ground up. One great example of a person who successfully, repeatedly, you know, used First principles thinking has successfully built business models around it is Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX. So Elon Musk, after his exit from PayPal, he wanted to build um, a space company, right? And he put up SpaceX. During In the past, it cost multi-million dollars to create a rocket ship and send to space. And the sad thing is it's quite costly because it's only a one-time thing wherein they build the rocket ship, they send it to space, and it's it not, it's not able to come back down. So Elon Musk uh, thought about it, right? How can we build the rocket ship at a more cost-effective way? So he first broke it down. Uh, what are the components of a rocket ship? And he identified, you know, um, copper, titanium, alloy, and so on. And he found out that, you know, the, the components, the materials used to build these rockets cost only 2% of the total construction of how, it, uh, ro- how much rockets are being sold now. So, you know, it started with first principle thinking by breaking, down, bring it, breaking it down to smaller components and identifying how can we uh, come up with a better approach, a more cost-effective approach. And now, you know, uh, Elon Musk was able to, uh, able to reuse uh, his rockets in SpaceX that were able to go to space and come back safely. So they were able to drastically uh, reduce the cost of uh, space travel. The next one, the next nugget of wisdom is the biggest ideas are contrarian. Contrarian in a sense that it, it may go against popular belief. So one great example here is Airbnb. Uh, it started with the founders, Brian Chesky and his uh, business partner. They were only trying to look for ways to pay rent in their apartment in San Francisco. And during that time, there was a large design conference happening in San Francisco. So they thought, you know, why not we put up a website entitled Air Bed and Breakfast. We just, uh, you know, uh, allocate or allot uh, our free space in our apartment, put up some air beds and offer them uh, breakfast, right? So what started as a uh, crazy idea against the normal belief that people are not willing to lease uh, their properties to people who they don't know, uh, now turned up to be turned out to be a very successful global brand. So things to look out for when thinking of contrarian ideas, right? Uh, look for the squirmy no, the space between a yes and no. So. Reed Hoffman has been a venture cap, has watched, you know, dozens, hundreds of pitches maybe. And he noticed that businesses that have that squirmy no uh, tend to be wildly successful. Wherein, you know, um, Airbnb, when they pitch to venture capitalists, it may seem the idea is too wild that maybe murders might happen, it's not safe, and so on. But at the same time, it makes a lot of business sense. So when venture caps are torn between it, it makes good business sense, but there's a huge risk, there, there may be potential to that idea to dig down further. So again, the biggest ideas always are contrarian and, and they go uh, against you know popular belief. The third one, which I really like, is design the extreme and build backwards. So this is how Airbnb built their company right they started with the 11 star framework 
So when Brian Chesky and his business partners were thinking about how can we really reimagine the hotel bed and breakfast experience, they started with the super extreme. What would it take? What would it feel like to have an 11 star experience, right? So if you notice here, right? Uh, for example, the 11 star Elon Musk is at the airport to fetch you. He's gonna stay in your place. Of course, that's impossible, right? So you start with a super bold, super crazy idea to that would really uh, be the epitome of the best experience that you could provide and work it yourself backwards on what is economically viable, what is attractive to the market, and so on and so forth. So the concept that you want to do, the outcome that you want to do is you want to make it so interesting enough uh, wherein your customers would want to share it to their friends. As a startup, there's no better way to grow your brand than the word of mouth. And the second um, tip is really about, you know, super serving your customers. Um, you know, a lot of startups have grown exponentially fast, but have died down quickly as well. Mainly because, you know, it's better to have 100 super fans who love and uh, are loyal to your brand versus 1 million uh, people who are uh, who just kind of like your product because it is these super fans super users who you can get honest feedback real feedback and they'll stick uh, with you till the very end the fourth one is this should exist list so as a entrepreneur uh, it's always about being intentional right to find the big idea it's not just some random day some you know, uh, burst of idea that comes into mind. It's about being intentional. You should be looking for it and you must actually create time and space for you to clear your mind and think about it. One of the techniques that Reed Hoffman does is, you know, think of 15 things uh, in life that should exist, right? How is it being done now? How can it be done better? Embrace the crazy. It is through these reflections, these insights, these uh, questioning of your daily experiences, uh, you could really identify challenges that not just maybe you experience, but the broad general public may experience. And if you deliberately think of ways on how you can actually solve it, can potentially lead to uh, you know, multi-million or even billion ideas. So think about what should exist that does not exist now. The last one is about being in permanent beta. So uh, the, the concept of being in permanent beta is thinking as your, of yourself as someone who is always a work in progress. It's not about you know, being the best and final finished product. It's about you know, as yourself, you're a constant learner. You're an infinite learner wherein every time you see something, approach everything with a new mind, fresh eyes, uh, seek new challenge to and new learning activities. Every day is a new day and a new chance to learn something new. A lot of people plateau because they feel that you know they've experienced as much as they can, they learned as much as they can. Uh, I truly believe that you know having this kind of mindset, being always in permanent beta, uh, would propel you to even an even um, uh, better future. So with that, those are my five key takeaways. If you like my summary of Masters of Scale, I do several other uh, summaries. Uh, I do one every Sunday. You could look me out at youtube.com, search Paolo Balinas, and I have dozens of books that I summarize every Sunday. So with that, that's all for this week. Uh, I wish everyone a happy, happy day, and thank you. See you next week.